Hi, and welcome to this beta save. In this save, we're not going to be going Newcastle. We're not going to be going Barcelona. We're not going to be going Man City. Instead, we're going to go for a team that I've got fond memories of from back in the late 90s. We're going to try and bring back the glory days to Fiorentina. When I watched them in the 90s, they had uh, Francesco Toldo was the goalkeeper. They also had... Gabriel Batistuta is our number nine. Uh, Rui Costa was there. So I think it'll be quite an interesting save. If that sounds interesting to you, uh, give it a like. Maybe have a comment below. It'd be great to have you on board watching this save. Okay, so as you can see, this is exactly why we're here. The Fiorentina squad haven't won anything in 18 years. They only managed to finish 13th in Serie A. Last season, they haven't qualified for the Euro Cup, they have no European qualification at all. They don't have a lot to spend, only 7 million, they don't have a large wage budget. It'll be interesting to see what the club vision and expectations are. The formation they seem to be favouring at the moment is a 4-3-3, either some inside forwards or wingers up front. Vlahovic is their number 9, and uh, Milenkovic is the top earner. It's unfortunate that... Federico Chiesa is on loan at the fierce rivals, Juventus. Um, would have liked to have had him here for this season. Okay, so we have a little bit of mixed messages on the club vision. So they want high reputation players, but also under 23s. Um, they want to play entertaining football and they want to use the youth system. A little bit of contradiction between the high rep and the under 23s. Also, it'd be interesting to see what players we could get on high reputation within such a wage budget. I think we're going to have to do a bit of wheeling and dealing to try and uh, improve the squad. It looks like they are planning on building a new stadium um, and they want us to work within the wage budget and try and increase their commercial revenue. Uh, their only real expectations seem to be to qualify for the Euro Cup um, and to get a little bit further into the Italian Cup. Their expectations even for future aren't very exciting or inspirational they just want to qualify for the euro cup it would seem so let's see if we can do a bit better than that a quick glimpse through of the squad depth and we can see that we've got some quite good players in most positions actually we just don't have much backup and other um, positions that are actually stocked with way too many players which we will go through and try and reduce. I also like to just tidy up the squad depth page to see who we actually want to play in these positions because it just gets a bit messy. Unfortunately, Chiesa, who is the star player for the squad, is on loan, as we noted before. Um, I'm quite surprised, actually, his value is only 490 for 6 million. Uh, it seems like he's worth a lot more than that to me. After having a quick look through some formation choices, I think I would like to play with a 4-3-3 as was shown initially um, when we took the job. I think it will work well with the players that we have and we should be able to play some exciting football with it um, and make the most of the players which we have. Um, and we do have some good players here. Defence looks like one place where we could possibly do with another star player to come in. Um, three and a half star level or more to improve it. Um, we have Igor on left back. It's quite young and braggy. Um, three stars, they're decent. We want Igor to really get better towards this season. So he's likely to play a lot of games, but do we want someone better in there? Um, also, goalkeeper looks a bit, bit average, um, but okay. So is that somewhere we want to look to review? Uh I will go through this more in depth, but these are just uh, my initial thoughts. The squad also looks like it's been weighed down with um, a lot of youngsters who aren't very promising. 
Lorenzo is a good example of that, um, and there are others. We'll be looking to clear out a lot of them, try and get the wage budget down. That will hopefully allow us to bring in a few more players which we can actually use throughout the season. In saying that though, a lot of the players who are here, especially the youngsters, aren't worth a lot of money. Um, at most, I think they're going to help to reduce the wage budget and how much that will help us remains to be seen. This initial stage when you've just got a new job, um, it's quite therapeutic just going through the squad depth page and organizing it, making sure that you know what your best team will be and also finding out what the deadwood is that you can clear out. I really need to go through this process. And really this page just helps to make it a little bit more visual, which is how my brain works. Um, work in design and um, really that's, uh, the things have to be visual for me. I don't really like to just scroll through uh, lots and lots of text <laughs> and saying that I'm playing quite a text-based game. I've got to say I hadn't upgraded since FM20 so a lot of these graphical upgrades which are in the new game um, I hadn't seen them from FM21 so it's been quite a, a jump um, just playing through this new version which is quite unusual especially when you buy every you generally buy every game um, every year and those increments have changed they don't usually seem quite as big which it's as you've kind of grown accustomed to. So to go two years without buying the new game and then jumping into it and seeing how visual it's become, it should be a major help um, to me personally um, and how I play the game. Um, rather than having to go through and find the information, more text-based information or find evidence of statistics where you can actually see them in some sort of visual format now, that's going to be interesting for me to see how that plays out. Going through these players, putting the ones that we don't want on the list, um, seeing the squad depth page reduce in players in specific positions, is just clarifying in my mind that we seem to have quite a good squad. Um, but as we said before, it's definitely about the depth. Uh, if we got any injuries to any of these players, we could struggle, especially as I do believe we're going to have to bring in youngsters in order to be the backups just because if we want to maximize the revenue for this club especially going forward we're going to want to try and bring players which we can sell on um i see this club now especially with the restriction on the wage budget and the just the transfer budget alone um that it's going to be a selling club so we're going to have to bring in players which are going to go up in value and we're going to have to give them a lot of game time and that could impact the results because we are going to have to play youngsters who are not quite as experienced, not quite as good with their current ability, but are going to come good in the future. The amount of midfielders we seem to have in the team is just overload. I do believe in rotation, you need rotation and um, a squad big enough to rotate through especially when you get um, so many games, especially in the Italian league, and they come once every three days. It can be quite tough, but the amount of midfielders we have here, I mean, some of them have seem to have quite a lot of potential. Um, however, there's just way too many. Which of these midfielders that we sell could be the real area where we can make some money um, which could allow us to bring in some maybe older, more experienced players into the squad um, because these are worth at least a few million pounds each unlike a lot of the youngsters.
takes a good bit of time to go through this process with every save, but the results are well worth it. Um, we spoke about how overloaded we were with midfielders, but you can also see that we happen to be quite light in the attack in midfield areas. So particularly the attack in right midfield position, uh, where we're likely to need another inside forward, and also the left uh, and a striker. Next up, we'll get on to quickly setting up the tactics. I'm not going to go with anything too custom. Uh, I'm going to go with three tactics based on the standard settings. My initial take for the tactics will be to set up three. Uh, one, four, three, three wing play. One, four, two, three, one control possession and another which will be a 4-3-3 gig and press. Uh, I'm quite cautious about the gig and press even though I know it's meant to suit Fiorentina according to the coaches but considering the recent changes to the game we may not always be able to play that so I'd like to have the wing play as a backup which is still quite high intensity um, and also look to have a control possession tactic. The control possession tactic may actually become the 4 through 3 as well, um, in which will allow us just to switch seamlessly between that uh, during games when we're actually doing quite well, uh, when we've got the lead um, and we can control it a bit more, and also reduce the intensity uh, and place the intensity more on the other team to try and get the ball back off us, which should combat the fitness issues we may get later on in games. Now that we've got the team analysed and the tactics in place, we have a quick reminder that the expectations for this season are quite low. Um, really, they just want to qualify for the UEFA Cup. At this point, I'm quite thankful that the expectations are low. I'm not sure how well we can go beyond them, but we'll try. It'd be great to break into the Champions League, um, certainly for bringing in higher quality players next season. We can see from the recent transfer activity that there's already been a lot of movement at Fiorentina. Um, they've spent a lot of money on Gonzalez from Stuttgart, who looks a good sign-in. Igor's actually a sign-in as well, left-back from Spall. Um, Nastasic is also a sign-in. Lucas Torreira is a great loanee from Arsenal, and so is Audrey Zola from Real Madrid. I think Audrey Zola is probably um, the best loanee. I think the outgoings are quite a good example of the challenge that we face. A lot of the players in the team aren't worth much money. You can see from who was sold, the total was only 20 million. So we would have to sell a lot of players again to really make the kind of money that we want to bring in new players this season. So I think that the big signings are going to be next season. Unless something major happens at the halfway point, um, we can see that... Frank Ribery went, he was quite old now, um, still got fond memories of him when he was in his prime. A lot of the players have actually gone on freeze, or so many youngsters on loan. Um, Kwame, Andalit, and Asente has gone for free. Some quite good youngsters that are out on loan that we could probably use. The most high profile sale that we've had is La Rola, who's gone to Olympic Marseille for 11 million. Just as we're finishing this episode, you can see that we're looking to offload a lot of players. Um, going to be making a lot of transfer activity, uh, really try and clear out the squad. Um, and what's hopefully going to be an exciting save as we try and bring back the glory days to Fiorentina. I hope that's whet your appetite for this save. And to keep watching, if it has, please give it a like. It all helps. Um, it'd be great to hear your feedback in the comments below. 
how you think we should set this up going forward, uh, what's going to keep it the most interesting for you, um, and hopefully I'll see you for not only this episode, but for future episodes.